school, Board of Education, to order. Please stand for the pledge to the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll second. Okay. Recognition and presentation. Recognition, Ms. Cindy. Hello everyone, I'm Cindy Skelly, Public Relations Coordinator for Shelby County Public Schools. And tonight we have a very special recognition of the MLCHS baseball team, in case you didn't notice all of the fine people sitting in front of you, you didn't recognize them. So we're here tonight to say congratulations to the MLCHS baseball team on being Region 8 champions and quarterfinalists in the KHSAA State Baseball Tournament. We want you all to know that you represented Shelby County wonderfully, and we are extremely proud of you and your accomplishments. So tonight, if Dr. Sugg and um, our superintendent and Ms. Joanna Frills, who is our board chair, they're going to come down, and um, if you'll come up and shake hands with them, and they will give you a special certificate of recognition. And then if you will line up for me between Miss Jackson and Mr. Klein, just right in front of them, you'll be on TV on the YouTube. You're not supposed to say the YouTube. That shows how old I am. Um, so I'm going to call your all's names. So come up, Dr. Sugg, Ms. and then line up so that we can take a picture. Miss Kat Strain is here from the Sentinel, and uh, we'll try again. Okay, good. So, first up, congratulations, Caleb. <laughs> Ty Forey. <laughs> Nick Hammond. <laughs> Jordan Harris. Also, if I do not say your name correctly, I used to be a teacher, just tell me what it's supposed to be and I will make the correction. It's the most nerve-wracking thing to do to say people's names. <laughs> Daniel Elmore. <laughs> Zach Gutermuth. Oh, Guttermuth? Did I do okay? Okay, good. <laughs> Parkman Kirkwood. Clay Lambert. <laughs> Cole Lambert. <laughs> Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> Nick McLaughlin. <laughs> Sean McLaughlin. Is it, it's not McLaughlin. Did I say it correctly? I saw some faces. Was it okay? McLaughlin? You all are being nice to me. Logan Parker. Nolan Schweitzer. Wyatt Schaefer. Trent Smith. Jacob Stover. <laughs> Eli Ware. Alston Whitworth. Bradley Williams. Brady Williams. And also, we want to recognize the people who coached you and made this happen. You guys, um, we know the importance of good coaches, just like good teachers. You're out there with the kids every day doing the hard work. So um, come on down, Coach Mike Hammond. <laughs> Coach Andrew Klein. <laughs> Thank you. 
Coach Calvin Dry. Coach Sean Rayleigh. <laughs> Coach Jim White. <laughs> Coach Zach Wiley. <laughs> Coach Gary Williams. Okay, did I miss anybody? Well, he had on a shirt, but I didn't know if he was just being a supporter. Coach Chad Bailey, come on down. I have to give him a special thing. Okay, Cat's going to order, yeah, three rows. I think that Coach Hammond might have a couple words. Okay. Guys, go, go ahead and sit down real quick. I think Coach Hammond has a couple words. Coach, you can go on just to the, to the mic there. On behalf of, on behalf of, our, of our team and coaches, we just want to say thank you so much uh, for, for this and recognizing us. But... More than that, uh, the, the community involvement in sending this off, it was a huge deal. Uh, as we passed by the board office and saw everybody dressed up, it was amazing. So the uh, community needs that, and we're glad to, we're glad to represent Shelby County. Uh, these guys did an outstanding job. We appreciate your leadership, Dr. Sugg, and what you've done. And this board, we appreciate your love of athletics um, for what you do for us. Uh, what you provide for us. Uh, we, we have the opportunity to play a lot of places around the state of Kentucky, and we're so fortunate uh, to have the facilities and the backing, and it all comes because of the leadership that you all have here and what you all have and the extracurriculars that you provide for us and the opportunities for our kids. We believe our, it adds into the lifelong learning that they have uh, to be good men, good fathers, good husbands, and good citizens to this this community. So we just want to say thank you. We've got a little gift for you, Dr. Sugg. Uh, our seniors uh, put together Aww. some stuff, and Aww. we have a picture signed, so we're going to give it to you. That is That's cute. Cute. I will treasure this. Thank you so much. Nobody's ever given me a baseball before either. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. It's not unusual for people to leave now. Now, you all can stay if you want to, but you're welcome to leave. We understand. Yeah. Go. It's, go o it's way okay. To go. Go. Way to go, fellas. Yeah, good job, guys.
Um, public input. We have three people that want to speak. Uh, let me remind you that it's a uh, two minute, you can speak two minutes and we will listen. I promise we will listen. So Beth Green is number one. I'm Beth Green. I'm a kindergarten instructional assistant at Heritage Elementary. I'm here tonight to ask you um, to look at in, into increasing the pay for instructional assistants as you start the budgeting process this year. The requirements for being an instructional assistant are 60 college hours or a paraeducator test. How am I, as an instructional assistant, compensated for the required 60 hours of collegiate work or the time that it takes to prepare for that paraeducator test? This is my 12th year as a Shelby County employee. In 2010, I started out making 1073 an hour. I opened my contract the other day and saw a 10 cent increase, bringing my hourly rate to $13.81 for this coming school year. That's 12 years with a total increase of $3.08. This increase doesn't even cover cost of living. I've called around to get starting pay from places in Shelbyville. McKinley Sandwich Shop, $14 to $16 an hour. Walmart Digital Shopper, $17 an hour. Lowe's Sales Associates, $16 to $20 an hour. The contracted hours are at six and a half, and I hope you would consider changing them to seven hours per day. This will help the instructional assistants be more efficient and prepared. This will allow us to be there when the children arrive until they leave and give us time to tidy up at the end of the day. I would like to invite each one of you to come to Heritage Elementary and observe the instructional assistant's daily routine as we co-teach with our certified teachers. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank Beth. Thank you. Okay, Leanne, Jesse. I'm glad to see a face with you texted yes. me this week and I'm now I can put a face with it. So. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. I reached out to uh, the board and I appreciate uh, your response and Ms. Jackson's response to my multiple questions. <laughs> I would like to take uh, for you to consider my questions regarding a mask mandate in our schools. I am against a mask mandate for students and faculty. Um, please consider these thoughts. Why would we wear when the surgical mask box clearly states it will not provide protection against COVID-19 or other viruses and contaminants, we ask our students to think critically, why aren't we doing that in regards to masks? Secondly, why aren't we concerned about the distraction of wearing masks in the classroom? Even Dr. Stephen Stack has said cloth masks are a distraction. How about we focus on undisputed and proven personal hygiene and nutritional techniques such as hand washing, not touching your face, sneezing and coughing into the inside of your elbow and encouraging families to supplement uh, with nutrients such as vitamin D and C and zinc. And lastly, let parents decide for themselves whether or not they want their own children wearing masks. If we enforce face coverings, then that decision goes against the U.S. Department of Justice that states, individual rights secured by the Constitution do not dis disappear during a public health crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kara Webb. Thank you so much. This in collaboration with my medical doctor, who also it is our firm belief that school systems should not interfere with patient autonomy or privacy. Community, do we want to be medically or legally liable? 
for pressuring such personal especially with an emergency use only experimental injection with limited non-biased data. Per the CDC, the chance of survival without any treatment for children ages 0 to 17 is 99.99%. In July, the VAERS system recorded 20 inflammation of the heart in children alone. In June, the WHO stated that more evidence is needed to make general recommendations on vaccinating children. Breathing oxygen is the most basic form of nutrition. Association recorded a for six died within three minutes while our children lung that should be if this truth proves to be true the school Inclusion, diversity, and tolerance are then rendered false. We understand that this is a hard time to do, and we thank the board for your service during this time to our community. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Webb. Thank you. That's all we have. Okay. Uh, discussion items. Superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Friels. We, you have, should have a copy of my report there at your desk. We are certainly in full swing of getting open back up for our new school year, which is really exciting. Hiring is continuing. We hire people even today and uh, yesterday afternoon and then had them in new teacher orientation this morning. So uh, we are making sure that all of our staff are prepared and trained and oriented toward their job of uh, leading our students and also really supporting them at the beginning of their teaching career. Our biggest concern is the rise of COVID numbers in our community and I appreciate you all coming and sharing with us your thoughts. We were hoping for a school year that was as close to normal as possibly could be and we developed our opening guidance around that thought and uh, and continue to, to hope that that is what we have. However, we're also monitoring all of the numbers. We're, we're monitoring the guidance from the Kentucky Department of Education, our state and local uh, health department officials, and also the CDC. And we're watching those numbers daily. Currently, there are 30 cases in our community and three occurring in children under 18 that we are aware of. While this may seem like a small number, we all know how relatively quickly things can get out of hand if we just think back to last year. So I'm encouraging the public to vaccinate and or stay at home if you are sick. And again, to follow those hygiene practices that were mentioned, hand washing, and again, staying home and, and keeping their children at home when they're ill. Our guidance is up before you, and I wanna just go over some of the highlights. It's, it's several pages long, but basically what we are saying is that masks will be required on the school buses. The school buses are a little different than our classrooms or in the hallways. And the reason for that is because you are bringing students from multiple grade levels all together in one confined space. So if one student has COVID, it's highly possible that multiple grade levels in multiple school buildings would be affected. And again, that was a requirement uh, of the CDC guidance. We are supporting parents who wish their students to mask in the buildings. And in our guidance, we are saying there will be absolute zero tolerance for bullying for calling students out that do or do not wear a mask or choose to do so. And so that, that is our stance at this point is that we're going to allow those parents to make that choice. We're going to continue with the misting at night in all of our campuses that has been shown to be effective to kill germs and to kill, um, I don't know the percentage, but it's a very high percentage of the virus. We're also going to continue all of the other mitigation strategies that we had last year, such as 
using hand sanitizer more frequently, also increased hand washing. Our uh, spacing is a little different this year. We've been suggested to, instead of six feet, look at three feet, which is a lot more reasonable, we feel like. And so with our younger kids in their classrooms, we're asking the principals to make sure that teachers are putting students in small groups and perhaps moving them throughout the day. Maybe that small reading group sits together in a pod and then they go to lunch and actually sit with those students. Of course, at recess, they're going to play with whoever they want to play with. Um, but the 15 minutes is also still in effect. So 15 minutes in breakfast, we wouldn't have to go back and actually look at uh, contact tracing and quarantine. And that is our biggest fear. Obviously, the fear of our children or our staff being sick, but next to that is the quarantining of students. We want to keep that as limited as possible. What I really want to emphasize to everyone is that this is a fluid plan. This is for today. This is where we are right now, and it will be updated as necessary. And we're asking all parents, staff, and students to please be flexible and to be ready to change course as the virus dictates or as we are dictated by guidance from KDE, which most of the time when it's coming from KDE, it's more than guidance. Uh, so we will keep you informed uh, between board meetings. I will keep you informed because it's a very fluid situation. The numbers are increasing exponentially. Uh, I do also want to say that Shelby County, contrary to what you may have seen, is in the yellow, not in the red. We just got that, uh, that information. And that will be corrected, I believe, tomorrow. So uh, that's where we are today what it looks like two weeks from now, two months from now, I can't really give you that. If we all knew what was going to happen, we, uh, we, we would be wealthy people, I think. So that's where we are, and the number one thing is we will do what we can to keep everyone safe. We have about 72% of our staff that were vaccinated last spring during our clinics, and then they also, obviously, we've had many staff that probably chose to get a vaccination elsewhere since then. So I feel very comfortable about our staff uh, being vaccinated and, and not bringing that in. But once again, staff and students are free to wear their mask, and we will support any parent choice of their student wearing a mask and make sure that there is no one singled out, no one made to feel that they are doing something right or wrong either way. And so that's how we're going to begin the school year unless something changes between now and then. And there's been some other things happening in our world, so I wanted to share these good news items. We continue to have uh, Shelby County Public Schools recognized in publications. Uh, the two here actually recognize uh, Ms. Dougal and also Ms. Tracy Hulesman and Adam Watson. Uh, I, don't, I want to put her on the spot. Ms. Dougal also is representing Kentucky in the uh, Advancing Education Committee, and it's a statewide initiative. We as Shelby County, as a district, have been selected among other districts, but Ms. Dougal has also been elevated to be on a certain committee that uh, I believe she needs to talk to us a little bit more about and maybe tell us what we have in our future to look forward to with that. YouTube world to hear this. You too want land. So at the local level, we'll start the local laboratories of learning in a couple of weeks where we will be um, working with a coalition, putting a group together in Shelby County. And the important part is that it's not just district, that is the community. So we'll be asking people from across the community to help us um, kind of investigate the context of education in Shelby County and uh, what we might need to do differently to show the success of our kids in many different kinds of ways for assessment and accountability. Then in the next level is the level I'm a, a coalition I'm on at the state level, um, and that is with Dr. Glass and um, several of, lot, 60 other people um, that we've been working together the last few months and those reports are going to come out I'm working on a committee right now to complete some reports um, about the state of education and right now 
Kentucky and going forward. And then I'm also on a committee with uh, the commissioner and a couple of other people on what we call the interstate um, learning community with people across the nation who are doing the same work and we're sharing in that work with them. So it's very um, intentional, planned, organized uh, structures and uh, the spotlight is really on the work that you are leading here. So I'll keep you updated. Thank you, Ms. Stugall. We really appreciate your hard work on all of that. Also, we really want to congratulate Leslie Springston as the new Simpsonville Elementary Principal. Congratulations, Leslie. Your first board meeting. And I also want to compliment the SBDM from uh, Simpsonville. They did a tremendous job. It's a lot of hours, a lot of work. Um, there's a, a very scripted process that we go through and it, it covered many days and lots of research, so they did a tremendous job. I was fortunate enough to be able to lead them through that. And I also want to compliment and thank Mr. Leeper because he trained them and got all of our materials ready, had everything ready for us, scheduled all the meetings, and he did a fantastic job of leading us through that. So thank you, John, I appreciate you. Um, the next thing I'm really excited to talk about, and that is our food service is in the black we have overcome a deficit yes, that we've been yes. working on apparently for a good while. And Ooh. so I want to thank uh, Cindy Murphy, who's not here, but I also want to thank Susan Barkley and all of our food service workers because that's where it happens. You know, their efficiency and uh, following protocols and, and really, really working to get that uh, in the black. You know, it's very few food service operations actually, I think, operate in the black consistently so we're really proud of them for overcoming that hurdle and then the next yeah it does deserve an applause and then the next slide shows just how much professional development is going on all summer long here there and everywhere and it was been it's been really fun this year to be able to do it face to face and not all of it on zoom uh, what you see there is actually I sat in with uh, several teams from multiple schools and they uh, attended what's called a renaissance learning. That one actually was virtual, but we were all together in a room watching. And so the, the, the ob observations and then the opportunity for talk among the groups uh, was great. So they were planning things for their first days of school, social emotional learning that's needed for their students and also for their staff and the culture of every building. That was the discussion there. But there's a lot of professional development going on. Uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow are three fantastic days of professional development for our new teachers and newer teachers and administrators to Shelby County. So that's uh, showing all of us there. We had Poochie's Barbecue over there on the right. We took them on a tour all around Shelbyville. One bus load was Miss Dougal with, as the tour guide, and the other bus load has Miss Stingle as the tour, tour guide, two Shelby County natives that could point out all of the uh, intricacies of Shelby County and the places of importance. So we want these folks that are coming to Shelby County to teach to be a part of Shelby County, not to just drive in and teach and not be a part of the community. So that's what we were doing, is showing them how great it is to live here, and again, they got to end up with Poochie's Barbecue. And so then uh, the last thing I'm very proud to say, I got to hang with Andy the other day. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was exciting. And uh, we had a major announcement in Shelby County, and Shelby County was the first on his list. So I think that says something about living in Shelbyville and Shelby County. Uh, I was very proud uh, to take a picture with him, and a lot of local dignitaries were there. It was just a great day, beautiful day. And um, so, again, very appreciative that we were able to, many of us from central office went down and got to listen to uh, the governor speak. So I appreciate him and his leadership, and that's what I have for you. And if you have any questions about any of it, including the guidance, I'll be happy to go over that. And I will get you a copy of this before you leave today. So I, I do have a question just to make sure. Mm -hmm. what, what I'm understanding is we're not requiring faculty, <coughs> staff, students to wear a mask. Currently, today. Yes, Currently that's today. where we are but today. As of right now, we're not, 
we're not mandating that, but right. we are allowing parents to choose to have kids wear a mask. Absolutely, and we will support them. If their students are supposed to be wearing a mask and we know that, we will support them uh, throughout the day in their, um, their the parents' decision to, to support that CDC guidance. And are we forcing are we forcing any kids to get the vaccine? Absolutely not. Are we forcing faculty to get vaccine? Absolutely not. Okay. No, that's all personal choice. And the only reason that, and Tracy's here, Tracy may want to speak to some of this. The only reason that that would be a, an issue is if someone is exposed and she starts her protocol of contact tracing and in that conversation they offer that they have been vaccinated, then they wouldn't need to quarantine. Is that correct? But we will not seek yeah. out that information. Okay. Any more questions for Dr. Sutter? Okay, staff reports. Uh, the renovation, Shelby County High School renovation pro project. All right, thank y'all for, <clears throat> for having me tonight. Uh, I'll try to be fairly brief. I've got a, a PowerPoint presentation here for you. Um, I guess you can start with the next slide if you don't mind. Uh, this is probably the um, estimated schedule that you've been seeing for quite some time. Um, obviously, we got a little bit la later start than we had intended. Uh, we started work middle of April, uh, so a little bit of a later, later start, but we feel very confident that if we maintain the workforce we have right now, which has been averaging between 50 and 55 workers each day, uh, we should be able to maintain that original completion date. So um, would like to thank uh, the, the school staff, Mr. Swindler. Everybody's been very cooperative working with us as far as the areas where we're working, uh, completing the areas prior to school. Some of the areas won't quite be ready for the start of school. Uh, so they've been very cooperative, and, and, and I want to make sure I, I state that. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this, these are the two areas we're primarily working. The Obviously, phase one is the front lobby entrance area. Uh, that work will be taking place basically for the entire life of the job. Phase one won't be started and finished before phase two finishes. It's, it's going to continue on for quite some time. Uh, the blue area is uh, the bottom row of classrooms and labs plus the kitchen are the areas that which will be turned over to the school prior to, prior to the start of school in a few weeks. Um, I wanted to make sure I, I say also that even though work will still be taking place in this general vicinity, uh, separation walls have been built, uh, floor to ceiling uh, with drywall on each side, so there will be a complete separation from the students and staff and the work that's taking place. Felicia? Snapshot. So obviously, as I said, demolition primarily, uh, the mechanical. Uh, we have released as much equipment as possible. Um, is that better? Thanks. Um, that's one of the big hurdles we're facing right now, as is every construction project, is getting materials in hand. So uh, the design teams work to get reviewed uh, and approved and released for fabrication. Uh, in that front lobby, one of the things that, that we, we get asked quite a bit is when is that front area going to be demolished? So we're nearing the portion uh, of work where we're going to have to go inside the building, build temporary shoring, temporary structural support to, to perform that demolition, to, to basically tear off the face of the building. So uh, right now that engineering is in process and that should be taking place in the, near, in the somewhat near future. Uh, the classroom work, again, same thing, uh, mechanical electrical plumbing work is going on, new ceilings have been installed, uh, getting ready to start dropping light fixtures, uh, grills and diffusers and that type of thing. Um, some of the big items next week is a very big week. Uh, permanent power, that's one that we've been talking about for quite some time, getting that switch gear installed. That has taken place, and we're on board for Monday to, to start that, um, make that change over. That's actually my wife's birthday, but I've had it circled because of the power startup instead of her birthday. Uh, <laughs> The very next day, Tuesday the 27th, uh, so we get the power on Monday. Tuesday, we're going to start the permanent systems back online. So that will allow the floor coverings, which has been a huge hurdle that Bill's, Bill's faced. We've got to get condi conditioned air going um, to start the floor coverings. So um, next slide. 
This is a picture of one of these walls I'm talking about. Um, I believe this picture is taken right outside of the gymnasium there on your left. So you can see this, this temporary wall has been built. Uh, at the top, you can actually see the ins there's actually insulation in the wall uh, to help cut down on the sound of the work taking place. Next slide. Um, again, just some progress pictures. The demolition ceiling's been demolished. Some of the masonry walls have been removed. Um, just kind of current status pictures uh, of, the, of the job site. Next one. Obviously, this is in the front lobby. You can kind of see a trash chute that's been built there to try to help with the cleanliness of the project. Next one. This is actually one of those eight uh, labs, classrooms that I was talking about. That is new uh, ceiling grid that is installed. You can kind of make out that the uh, registers and diffusers are being laid in. Light fixtures will follow as well. Next one. Here's your kitchen. Um, I did one of, one of the major issues we've run into is the uh, freezer and cooler that have been removed. We do not have the new freezer and cooler in hand um, and probably won't for quite some time. So temporary measures have been taken. Early next week, a temporary cooler will be delivered, which will remain on site at no expense to the district contractor's expense to rent that equipment to uh, maintain the food services. Um, the kitchen will be completely cleaned, obviously, and inspected by the health department before, before school starts. This is uh, the, the new switch gear. Uh, the transformer's been set as well, so all that major work is being, being taken place. Next picture. Uh, some of the big ticket items will take place here in the next few days, actually. Like I said, floor coverings, the paint work, um, all the finishes on these spaces that are being turned back over is taking place. Uh, the, the, the roof work will continue as well. Uh, and one thing I didn't get any good pictures of is the work over at Milestone. Um, July of this year and last year both have been some of the wettest months. It's, it's odd, you think that'd be the most dry season, but the last couple of years it is not. But that work is still progressing. Site work been cut to rough grade on the fields. So we fully expect here in the next few days to resume uh, the drainage uh, foundations for both the field house building and also the backstop walls on the baseball and softball field. So um, should start seeing some action out there in the very near future as well. This is uh, one of the sample logs we use in our progress meetings where we kind of track anything with dollars that we may foresee coming down the line. Um, you know, when you're doing these renovation projects, especially you're always gonna encounter some things when you get in, open up the building, really see what you're dealing with. So as you can see, we're currently reviewing some pricing on some uh, drainage piping that we need to, need to account for before we demolish the face of the existing building. Um, and then some, again, some, some drainage in the uh, courtyard. But, so I just wanted to kind of touch on those, make, make the board aware that these are some things that may circle back to at, at some point down the future. There's pricing's in, in review uh, with the design team. And this, of course, this last one is, is the finished product. That's what we're working towards. So um, that's kind of a quick update of where we are today. It's, it's go, go, go. Um, again, I want to say appreciate the efforts of the, of the district and the school. Um, I know it's not an easy thing to deal with, uh, especially right here before school starts. So I appreciate everybody's efforts. And I'll, Harry, if I've skipped over anything, feel free to jump in. <coughs> all right. Do any of you all have any questions for Mr. Oh, Cobell? It looks good. I'm just an ad. Or wing guy anytime they come. <laughs> I'll Speak into this, the microphone. How much of this, back when we, we, we you, you got your bid in, there, there's a lot of companies that know that they can sell that product a lot higher right now than sell it when you got that bid. And some of them are reneging on some of that right now. They, they say we can't get a hold of it, but what it is is it, it's just holding back on price-wise. Are you being able to be delivered everything that they were promised to at the price that it was promised to? We, we had a project that actually we changed the structural steel 
to uh, precast plank uh, at the last minute here recently. There are various materials that are uh, being, uh, they have difficulty delivering um, in, in a scheduled way because of the, because of the, the pandemic. But, um, uh, and they include steel and plastic and wood and we need all of those things. So, um, but we're, these guys are doing a good job of staying ahead of it. And um, Bill is uh, in constant contact with me to get me to move uh, and uh, respond to his questions so he can keep going. So um, I think we're, we're uh, got a good team, so. Steel and equipment is about like it was in World War II. In other words, I know people that are ordered like a telehandler that uh, won't not get it till late November. It's, it's not, not available. And most of the time you can get anywhere on the internet and find a half a dozen on, online sitting on a lot brand new. Hmm. But I, I talked to a guy in Alabama and uh, he said it'd be November before I can get it. I can put you in line and you can send a third of the money in and maybe you might get it. We, we haven't heard that since World War II when things just got that scary. That's the reason why I asked you the question about, you know, who's delivering it and who's not. Some of them blame it on the truck companies that can't get it to you, and then, or some of them are price hacking the materials. And, and a lot of the, the people that, I, that we work with are uh, just the, the end of the supply chain. They, their suppliers back behind them are, are where the the hiccups are, um, that's, but. That's actually the issue with the freezer and cooler. It's not that there's not, we can't get out our freezer and coolers. They can't obtain the materials to build the boxes right now. So that's, that's the hang up with, in that particular instance. So it's, it's a struggle. Thank you, Harry. Thank you all. Thank you. I want to thank Margo too. Ms. Wisman has been extremely flexible and I appreciate you all working so well with her. Uh, from Codell to make sure that she is a ahead of the game when changes have to be made. She's been really flexible, and as long as you are keeping her in the loop, we're going to make it. As long as changes don't cost more money. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you carry it out of your pocket. <laughs> okay, the next item is ARP ESSER Plan Review. I'm getting so I like that word ESSER. I, don't <laughs> I didn't know what it was at first, but I like it now. So. While my team is coming up to the microphone, I want to give you just an overview. This is a really high level and very fluid plan. Of course, this is our federal money that's come in, and we call it ESSER. There are various names. There was ESSER 1, ESSER 2, helping us deal with the pandemic. This is a third uh, round of money and um, there are specific things we can and cannot do with it but it's very very fluid and so uh, we haven't uh, had to submit a final plan yet but obviously needed to have uh, a game plan to how to use these funds most effectively uh, prior to school starting we did have lots of stakeholder input which you'll hear about We'll continue to review it after our students and our staff come back and throughout the year. So I think we're gonna start maybe with Mr. Leeper, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So part of the requirement of the funding is that we do seek out that stakeholder feedback. And so as we move on to the next slide, we begin to see that um, a lot of districts around the country that received this funding, were, they were just struggling with how to get that kind of feedback. Um, in Shelby County, we were fortunate enough to be able to use our systems and just push out a survey to every student, every employee, every family member, as well as our community and business and industry leaders. The chamber actually took this survey and pushed it out to all of their um, members as well as the Industrial Development Foundation. So we cast a very wide net and so far, we've gotten over 600 uh, responses. And you can see, just with the quick, the quick buttons there, you see addressing lost learning opportunities are the, it, it's number one. Um, but quickly diving down into the others, you begin to see that need 
for that desire for mental health supports. And another portion of the survey allowed the individuals to type in specific suggestions. And overwhelmingly, whenever somebody got to write out a narrative of what they thought it should be, they really spoke to tutoring, and they also spoke to social emotional learning needs that are there. So we, that survey is still open, and we are still seeking input from all of our stakeholders across the community. Next slide. So. Okay, one part of the plan is uh, focusing on the reopening of schools, and Dr. Sugg already mentioned uh, the plan that we have in place at this time for safe reopening and some of those efforts that will be continuing that we practiced during last school year. Uh, one new item that's in our plan is an assessment of air quality in our schools. Uh, that purchase order has been cut and that work is underway. So when we get the results back from that air quality study, then we'll have some more decisions to make depending on those results. Do we need to uh, make any improvements in those areas in any of our buildings? So that's coming soon. We will continue daily misting for all of our schools and our buses. We have increased and will maintain that higher number of nursing staff so that we can ensure every one of our schools has a full nurse. And we are recruiting two of those right now, rules two. We definitely need some folks applying for lots of positions. So if you know anyone looking, come to our website. <laughs> Provide technology to support learning. So there are various technology uh, initiatives in place, including um, some work with connectivity. And then we will purchase additional PPE as necessary, and that could be uh, things like the nitrile gloves, for example, and the continued use of hand sanitizer at our entry and exit points and on our buses. So the next portion is the academic uh, component and looking at the feedback from our stakeholders. We have a couple of things that we're uh, adding to the plan and to this plan that, as we said before, will change as we get new information. Uh, the first one is providing the summer learning opportunities we have this year for this year. specifically for individualized education plan education area if they did not receive um, during that COVID time then we um, give them those services now. and that will be occurring from now until through next summer probably we have a year and a half to complete that and uh, the other thing that we're doing um, is using some of those ESSER funds equip our teachers. As you remember during uh, the time period of COVID, uh, our teachers had to do a lot of learning. Um, so we want to make sure that we are equipping them going forward in a sustainable kind of way. And so we have a, a system of professional learning that we are implementing that we have revised and been building for several years uh, for all of our teachers to have a continual uh, strand of learning that they're working in so that no matter uh, what is thrown their way that they are equipped to do so. We also believe this will help with retention of teachers uh, because we will be meeting their needs and equipping them appropriately. And on the next one, um, the way that this uh, presentation is organized is around the requirements of the plan that must be posted on our website in the next few weeks and submitted to KDE. So this one is just called Remainder. Um, mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that we are considering is and have done is providing an additional teacher allocation uh, to schools or allocations to support small group instruction and intervention. That's one of the key things the state and their feedback. We already knew that was a need. So our schools are getting additional uh, personnel to help uh, with some of that intervention. Uh, we also will be employing uh, work-based learning staff uh, to support high school students in successful internship opportunities. Um, as you know, the uh, workforce in Shelby County community has decreased 
um, and they're having difficulty as we are with um, employing people. Um, and the uh, other part of that, our high school students lost lots of opportunities to be an internship and work-based learning during that time period as well. So we are going to have a person who will uh, build that program and connect our communities uh, with, uh, with a school regard. I'll just talk loud. Um, we're also going to partner with a consultant um, to do several things, uh, assess needs, create a strategic plan, implement continuous improvement processes, and evaluate the effectiveness of that plan through stakeholder feedback. So next year will be, uh, this year, coming year is the last year of the current strategic leadership plan. So going forward, uh, we are going to be working, uh, hopefully, with um, a consultant to create the plan and then over the next four years working to make sure we have systems in place uh, to check our progress and see when we need to revise and refine around that. The last one is um, a proposal to allocate some of those funds to individual schools because we can't just make blanket statements about the needs of all kids all of the time. It's not the same in every school. So um, providing the leadership and the schools uh, some funds to decide what their kids need uh, due to that COVID learning loss will also be a part of that plan. Uh, and they can make those decisions um, with their stakeholders and their communities and their schools. On the next page, we have social emotional learning. That's the last portion. Uh, that is a part of the plan that needs to be submitted, and it is a huge part of the stakeholder feedback. Uh, one of the things that we're going um, to do is to offer a $2,000 stipend for all of our staff members. That's going to be tied to a um, school-based family engagement plan. So here's what we, uh, what we learned through the, through the pandemic time period. Our teachers forever have done a great job communicating with parents. And they didn't know what true communication was until uh, they experienced this past uh, 18 months. And actually being in the homes um, virtually and through phone calls, front yard visits, front door visits, they really learned how important communication is with families. So we are going to ask that schools develop a parent and family engagement plan that includes home visits, possibly community events where, where the staff, including classified and certified staff, are going into the community, offering support academically and social emotionally about how to help support kids um, in, in this time. So uh, that will, those people who participate in that plan and implement the plan, uh, we'll receive a $2,000 stipend. The next uh, point is to provide additional mental health and social emotional learning support for students participating in virtual learning. Um, just a clarification, last year, as you know, we offered so, uh, at home, SCPS at home at every school. This year, to help our teachers and families, uh, we are offering virtual learning, but it will all be through the Cultivate Virtual <laughs> Learning Academy, which will be K through 12. As you know, that waiver that um, was agreed upon by KDE. I will be overseeing that program um, with a staff of teachers, and it is growing every day. So um, those kids who are in the virtual learning, we needed uh, some additional help in the areas of social emotional learning and mental, mental health support for them. So that is an item there. And the last one is just to say that we are continuing to investigate practices uh, for social emotional learning for all of our students. So that is going to be a huge area. We are already doing some things now, but we will continue looking at that evidence-based practice. Um, one of the things you'll see on the final uh, plan that will be posted our research and case studies. Um, all of the things that we submit to KDE for approval have to be uh, backed by evidence and research. So we have um, been working on that and all of those case studies will be linked, the research will be linked to the plan. I think that's all. 
Yes, what questions do you have for us? I have a question. I, I was waiting to see if anybody else jumped in. So can ESSER funds, uh, what are the restrictions on ESSER funds in terms of uh, creativity? Like are we, is it pretty flexible or are they pretty strict? I'm going to start and then Susan can jump in because um, we are involved in different areas of that. So um, there are three kinds of ESSER funds. There were the CARES funds that started and a lot of that we used in, in here and across uh, the state with food service and transportation mm -hmm. um, from the CARES Act. Then the second allotment, which we are currently uh, using, are called CRISPA, a different act that we have ESSER funds. Um, those uh, had some certain restrictions on that, a little tighter than the ESSER 1 funds. And this, these are ARP, American Rescue Plan funds. Um, so they also have some restrictions. For instance, in the academic realm, they fa fall under all of the Title I federal grant guidelines. That's why I have to show research for anything academic on there. It has to fall under the evidence-based practices um, categories. And there are four categories. I won't go into that. So those are really tight. The other part is that everything has to be related to COVID. It has to be um, in, a, in a response to something around COVID. Um, and then there are some other things about percentages of uh, of the funds that we'll let the numbers person talk about. Do you want to talk about any of those restrictions? She did a great job on that, actually. She's so much taller than I am. Um, no, uh, Ms. Doodle did a great job of explaining that. The percentage that she's referring to on the ESSER, ARP ESSER, this third round of funding, there is a requirement that at least 20% of those funds be allocated to activities that address that lost instructional time. Um, but of course, that was the top concern based on the stakeholder feedback that we, re that we received. We are absolutely prioritizing that as, um, as a need. So there would be no issue with us meeting that 20% requirement. With the ESSER II funds, that, uh, the second round of funding that we are currently utilizing, there was another restriction there. The state offered some additional money, to call the bonus money, if you spent a certain amount of those funds on items that the state categorized as a direct service. So in order to ensure that we receive the maximum amount of funding available, we have been very careful to make sure that we are meeting that requirement so that we can obtain that additional money. Okay, very good. Any, any more questions? I think it clear across the board with everything you're going with, uh, this is a time that family resources are really gonna to have to be a big, big part of all this to reach out to make sure that the students that need this are getting the help, whether it be in classroom or home or whatever. But uh, listen to the news here lately, and it's all about safety of children in school. And how are we addressing some of that? Is this another whole gamut that we're talking about? But I know this is one of the big things that a lot of bigger schools right now are talking about, how safe are the children going to be when they go back. So. Yeah, and that will be, and that's that first part about, it's called reopening schools, but that will entail all of the safety parts. So the um, document that Dr. Sugg shared at the beginning in her superintendent's report will also be embedded in this. This is a more comprehensive report than um, just this, this slide presentation that kind of summarizes our current thinking. By next, um, by the 31st of July on our website, we'll have a narrative of the current form of this plan. It'll have all of that in there for each section. Um, and then following that, by August 31st, we have to submit a um, line item budget. Uh, we, Ms. Barkley will uh, submit a line item budget for all of that, and then we will use the narratives in that. It's um, actually, this is grant money that we have to apply for, and then that will go to KDE, and then they will give us feedback on that plan. So it's a pretty long process. So this is where we are right now in that process. Is this mostly state money, or is it federal This is money? federal. 
federal that's allocated to the state, and then the state allocates it um, across the state. Thank you, team. Okay, board discussion. Mr. Klein. Uh, first of all, earlier we had a whole room full of baseball guys. I have to make some comments. Um, first of all, I'm very proud of them. I'm proud of the work that they've done. Uh, many people don't realize that those guys, especially the group that was over on this side, because they're the older ones. Those guys uh, spent from October, really middle of September, to February 15th meeting me at 6 a.m. every morning at the school to run on the track, sprint on the field, lift weights in the weight room, Monday through Friday. Uh, they, they spent a lot of time focusing to work on their craft. I got the opportunity to work with them in the mornings at the track, having trash cans over there for them to, to throw up in or whatever else, and making sure that they're hydrated and all those things we have to do to keep them safe. But lifting weights, getting their butts out of bed at 6 a.m., being there by 6 a.m., before school starts, get back home, take a shower, come back and be, be to school on time. Have their grades checked all year, all year long, be held accountable all year long. That's what those guys did to then move into the baseball season. So there's a lot that they do, and there's a lot behind the success. Uh, and it's not just them, but that's an example that I, I personally know, and I know that we have a lot of teams out there that do that at both of our high schools. So I just want to say congratulations to them. I'm proud of them. Um, and I'm proud of all the athletes that uh, continue to, to put that work in because it does end up paying off. Um, the kids that were sitting over on that side, they're my younger guys, and COVID allowed them to get a text from Coach Klein that said, here's your workout for this week. They didn't actually get the whistle and the yelling from Coach Klein. So um, they will. Uh, they, they will soon. So... Um, Real excited to get to, uh, to work with them, but proud of the guys. Um, I, I wanna share that I asked for clarification earlier on the mask mandate and if we're mandating masks on the students and faculty, um, because I wanna clarify. However, I just wanna clarify where things were. That's why I asked the question. I'm not going to let it be thought though that I'm not in support of the vaccine. So publicly, um, I, I'm not trying to be political, I'm just wanting to share that I, I'm in and out of hospitals every day or I'm on the phone with people that work in hospitals. Uh, the clients that I work with are seeing 60% increases in COVID cases week over week right now. My wife is coming home from work from downtown Louisville, and they're seeing an inordinate amount of RSV. It's a different virus. It's a respiratory virus. It affects kids. We don't know why, but this is unusual. We don't see it in July usually. But we're, all of a sudden, we're seeing that. So then I'm on the phone, and I'm talking to people in Houston and in California and in different areas around the country, and guess what? They're seeing increases in RSV, and they're seeing increases in COVID. But interestingly, the people that are dying from COVID are the unvaccinated. The people that they're seeing with the vaccine are being treated and released. They're not being admitted into the hospital because they don't need admission, meaning they're not dying. The ones that have vaccine, they're not dying. The ones that are going into the hospital and being admitted and having uh, a hard time are the unvaccinated, okay? So, or non-vaccinated, whatever the, I'm sure somebody is really good at English down here. So, uh, I just wanted to share that. It's not political, it's just me sharing my little case studies that I'm, that I'm experiencing personally. That's what I'm hearing from around the country. I hope that we can open up school 
exactly as we have planned and keep everybody safe and let everybody have their, their, their rights to do things the way they want to do. Absolutely. But I also don't want anybody to think that I'm not hearing that there's a 50 to 60% increase week over week of COVID cases right now. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm hearing somehow things are better for the people that are non-vaccinated. That's not what I'm hearing. So I look forward to my, all of my kids being able to get vaccinated. Right now I've got two left because of age. And as soon as I can do it, they'll be getting it. Because what I'm hearing personally, what I'm hearing from out in the, in the country. And that's all I've got. Congratulations to Ms. Leslie Springs, Springston as the new Simpsonville principal. Uh, congratulations to the baseball team. And thirdly, just a reminder, on Saturday, July 24th, Shelby County is having a ready fest at the Blair Center from 10 to 2. And it's for school supplies, dental screens. Do you know if any hearing anybody want to talk about? What else is happening? Okay. 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 And it's all free. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I didn't know you could get a free haircut. I wouldn't have gotten my hair done. I could have <laughs> gotten <laughs> So just a reminder to come out, support, bring the kids out. It's a free event from 10 to 2 on Saturday at the Blair Center. This Saturday? Yes. <laughs> 10 to 2. Ms. Blackburn, thank you. I had that on my report and I forgot to mention it, so thank you very much. No problem. That's all I have. Mr. Phillips? I like to echo what Andrew said. Uh, it, this thing gets real technical, what you can or cannot do to prevent someone from continued risk. Uh, in other words, uh, I, I know the vaccine is working, but the most trained people are the one that argued the most uh, about you know what what we should do or should not do for us making children either wear a mask or get a shot and this is a big national deal where cruise ships airplanes or however they they, they can mandate it and it's not going to get any easier for us with school children so i, I just hope that like he said that it is on the rise that we can have a peaceful opening of the school and keep the doors open. There's nothing of all the training and everything we do and then we have to shut back down. Uh, that, that's where we don't wanna be. But in other words, if something doesn't happen to put the brakes on it, uh, it, it like Andrew said, it's not just here, it's all around, it's, it's sort of climbing. So in other words, uh, we just have to do it one day at a time, so. Ms. Brenda? Okay, I want to welcome our newest principal, welcome our new teachers that we have. And I got to sit in the 19th on the school funding task force. I've been able to listen. I've invi been invited, but you can't, you can send in notes. You just can't say that much right now. But the meeting Monday covered SEEK and the ad office. And that was really interesting. And then at the end, we had our one of the former um, state superintendents, Pruitt, gave oh, yeah. uh, gave a talk at the end about what other states were doing and about not thinking when we think through what we're going to do with uh, trying to fund our school system. We have to think in the long run. And there are other 
things that need to be taken in. I want to thank the health department for providing in the Martinville area with the DARE, there was an event and they provided the free COVID shots there. And also this past week, uh, Clay Street celebrated their 161st church anniversary. And on the Saturday at the event at the fairgrounds, they were also there to offer the free COVID shots. So they're available if people would just listen and get them. I've got some strange answers and <laughs> from people that you ask to take the shots or have they gotten there and they have some really different ideas. So it said, I look forward to school opening and all the things that we're doing to keep our students safe. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, again, I want to congratulate Leslie for uh, being selected for principal. Uh, I went to write and I drove, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, I don't know, all the days go alike. I drove over there and I saw, saw all the buses lined up and I know, I knew the summer program and it was a big success, mm -hmm. but when I saw all those buses and went in and saw all the children and they were so excited about making salsa, which I didn't get any because they weren't going to open it till the next day. And, uh, but the kids were really excited, I think, to be back with each other. And they were hiring me as I was going down the hall. So uh, that was really good to see in person because I didn't imagine it being that big like it was. So that's great. Uh, I attended the new teacher orientation, which is always so much fun because I was there 32 <laughs> years ago myself and it, it's they're just you're just so excited when you're beginning to teach and you get to have a new class and be with kids and I, they were just I talked to several of them and it was it was really fun. Um, I was in Walmart the other day and I ran into uh, Mrs. Jess uh, Alice Jesse who she has worked for Shelby County Public Schools many, many years, and she was with her grandson, and they were buying stuff for him to go to Wyoming for the diesel truck. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me all about it, and he was really excited and everything. So I'm so proud of him, and uh, I know Alice had a lot to push him along the way to do this and he'd never been on an airplane either so uh, that's going to be an experience but he was really excited and I'm thinking that came from our program that we have here to motivate him to go out there to do this so I just wanted to say something about that I'm glad that we're going to do the $2,000 uh, for the, t the staff in the county to do the home visits, they're real worthwhile. When I did preschool that time, I love doing the home visits. You learn so much, or whatever they decide to do as a group. Uh, this is really good for our staff, and uh, I'm glad to see that happen. Uh, just what Andrew said about the the vaccine, uh, we got a. My husband got a note from friends of ours and they had all been to Gulf Shores. They received uh, COVID when they came back. Now, I'm not sure all of them were vaccinated, but some of them were. And of course it wasn't as serious, but their, their family got it. So it's something we need to think about and be serious about, uh, which I hope everything I feel safe because I've had my vaccination and I feel like if I get it, it won't be as serious as if I hadn't had my vaccination. So, And if they've got a tracking device in me, that's fine because my phone's tracking me too. So there you go. So, I mean, I've heard people say that, that they're putting a <laughs> tracking device in you. Well, my phone's tracking me, so there you go. Um, 
the other thing, when I flew back, when I flew this last week, they were really, really strict about the mask on the plane. Not that they haven't been all ever since January that I've been flying back and forth, but this time they were more. I mean, they walked down the aisles, and if they had them down like this or like this or anything, they made them pull them up, and they announced it several times during that one and a half hour flight. So they know something too. They're, they're really being cautious on the plane. And that's all I have to say. Ms. Brills, I have, yes. I have one more thing. Um, I did not remember, but I found it. Um, for those that are needing more hours for con continuing ed, <laughs> There is a book study uh, that made on the record. There's a book study um, that tomorrow is the last day that you can sign up. KSBA is doing a book study. It's how not to be a terrible school board member mm -hmm. is, is the name of the I book. I thought we I've had that. We had, we, 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 we've done that. Well, if you've already read it, we've got the book then you can do it again and get we've two hours credit. I mean, y'all got to know how to play the system. All right, everybody. I've got I've got we're going to get so excited. So. There's a book study. Tomorrow's the last day you can sign up. Okay? Tomorrow's the last day you can sign up. If you sign up and you do the book study, even if you've read it, read it again, and you get two hours credit. And y'all can catch up with me. That's all I've got. I signed up for it. I have a book. Oh, I'm doing it. That's, that's two hours. I've already read the book. So, yeah. And, Kathy, I do want that in the record that he did cheat. So I just want that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Leeper. That, and above and beyond. All, that's all right. We okay. all need to know how not to be terrible board members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought we received that book. So, we did. Yeah, I read it at the time. But, but now I guess they're I doing it again, so I signed up for it. <laughs> Two I hours. Have, I have a question. That stipend, are instructional assistants included in that? Everybody. Awesome. Maintenance, awesome. food service, oh, custodian, okay. everybody okay. that participates. Okay. I think Bus it's drivers, wonderful. everyone. Awesome. So, okay. Informational report. Certified and classified reports of personnel action. Any questions? Okay. School financial, June 20, 21. Any questions or discussions? Okay. Board action items. Consider approval of payment and claims and authorize. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. second. Okay, Brenda second. Any discussion? Do this every board meeting, but we thank the finance people Paul, for sending out a weekly list so mm -hmm. you can review all of these prior to. It's tonight. so much easier. <laughs> it is. It's so so much easier to have the big ones picked out. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 2B, consider approval of monthly financial report June 20th, 21. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, 2C. Consider approval of the, B, of the BG5 for BG19329 painted stone outdoor classroom. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Where, where did we get out the project? We paid for it, we've done it, it's finished. What's all this uh, coming up here? Uh, I don't know how many times you got to finish that job. <laughs> it's the paperwork. It's the BG5, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the five one. ends it, right? I haven't yeah. been out there yet, but I want, I want to go out and see it's great. it. It's great. Okay, let's have a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 2D, consider approval of the revised salary schedule. So Do moved. I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Oh, well, that's unusual. Somebody's got a second. Come on, Sonia, don't be shaking. Second. Okay. 
Any discussion? Oh. Okay, I have a question that it's not on here, but how many of our staff classified or certified that are at their max as far as mm -hmm. the years of service and uh, the steps? If we ever look at those that are at the max, how long they've been there? and what we intend right. to do for those. I don't know the answer to that. We can certainly run a report and get that for you. Okay. We did several years ago for bus drivers. <clears throat> After you met 10 or something like that, we maxed out. And uh, I know, know we moved that up. And maybe we back with custodians, different ones. So over the years, we went back and looked at that. And rewarded them for being with us longer service and so I think I think it's money well spent so I think one time when I was teaching and Dr. Moonahan was here I think when you got over that threshold I think one year they gave all of and there wasn't very many that was over that number I think we got like a bonus of some kind or uh, they raised the price because we're, you know, once you get 28 years, I think it's 28 years, you don't, you can't, unless everybody gets a raise, there's not a jump. So it's something, something to think about. And when we look at the classified, theirs runs, uh, what, 30? And then you go with the steps, that you got years of experience. But 28 for 30 for, uh, okay, 30. I think back in the old days it was 28. Okay, let's have a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, cons um, the consent items. Uh, we're going to pull 3C and 3D. Are there any other consent items that needs to be pulled? I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda items as presented for A and B. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. All in, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, let's look at 3C. Consider approval of new job description. And I think we've got the new uh, job you, description in the packet. Yes, you do. There was some information that we actually did not have at the time of printing the packet. So what you have at your table there, the loose sheets that uh, we passed out, Kathy gave you, we have two positions, and Ms. Dougal actually spoke to these, or someone, I believe it was Ms. Dougal, uh, when she was talking about our ESSER funds and what we plan to do with them. And certainly we know that all of our students who are involved at the ATC or involved in work-based learning were shorted because of COVID. They could not get out and have those hands-on experiences. So we are using the ESSER money to help make up for that. The work-based learning liaison that you see, that is an up to 220 day position. And this is very similar to the position that you used to fund a half of a position for with the local chamber. Uh, a lot of the same um, goals are for this person to work with business and industry and work with the school system. The chamber is working parallel paths with us, so it's not that we are not working with them anymore, but we have an increase, increased need for more time, more people, more hands to get our students out in the workforce and to make those connections. So the work-based learning liaison will be a district position, and that person will work between business and industry and our school system to help make those connections. Also to coordinate uh, the advisory capacity of the businesses and industries to help us understand what jobs are needed, what skills we need to teach. And so that's, it's a big job and it's a new position, but it will be funded by ESSER funds. And those ESSER funds, I should have said this early, but the ESSER funds are kind of a once in a lifetime funding stream. You need to think of it like that. So we are trying to be creative and think of things that we know we need that certainly are COVID related, but that we ordinarily could not put in our budget. 
And so that is one that I feel will be a great boost to all of our work-based learning and all of our uh, ATC and all of our CTE courses. The second one is work-based learning coach. And this person will work more closely in the schools half time at each high school and will work with the guidance counselors and the staff and, and in addition to the ATC uh, teachers as well to help design what those learning uh, goals are, to help make those connections for work-based learning placement, but also to make sure that we are evaluating what those students are doing while they're out on their work-based learning experience. So this person will be uh, uniquely uh, tasked with communicating with those employers that are receiving our students and making sure that they get feedback on attendance, on job performance, and how we can better help them be better workers. So this person is going to be really in the trenches with the kids and with the employers. And I'm also going to kind of give you an analogy. I know you know what a great job Susie Burkhart does with our college and career readiness. She knows where every senior is, where they're going, what their scholarships are, you know, what their goals are, the passions, and where they stand uh, with uh, their ATC, all, their, all of those things. This person is going to be kind of like the Susie Burkhart, only for work-based learning. She will know where every student is and their placement and how they're doing and be communicating that back and forth between employers between the, um, with the uh, liaison. And then over all of that is Mr. Coleman. We've uh, taken away a lot of his duties and rearranged things so he can focus simply on CTE, work-based learning, and our ATC, and making sure our kids are doing just what Ms. Friels described, getting ready for that next step. You know, 14 is really the new 12. I've heard people say that. Everybody needs something after their high school year. And so we've got to use that senior year to get them ready for whatever that is, whether it's college, the workforce, technical school, or just um, an internship. So these two positions I'm really excited about. They will be, um, again, funded through ESSER. And the reason that you see the funding source on there is because we are going to continue to say to these people, show us your worth, show us the productivity, show us the return on investment, and the things that we're funding with ESSER that we see a couple of years from now that are giving us that return, we can maybe talk about those and put them in our, our recurring budget. Um, so that, that's a little bit more about that, and I, I, I had a couple of questions, and I was really glad to be able to pull that and talk about it because I'm very, very excited about the possibility for these two people. Okay. So I have a next. question. Mm -hmm. Got some, go ahead, Angela. I have a question, but do I need to wait until we have a motion, or can I ask it now? Well, I didn't know whether we made a motion on on both of these, and then take both of these items together. Here you want me to make a motion on this? Here you want it. I make a motion. To separate the two different mm -hmm. things. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion I'll to. Okay. Now I want to ask a question. Discussion. Yeah. Um, so on the work-based learning coach, uh, first of all, your, your answer or what you gave on the ESSER funding, I, I wanted to make sure that I understood that this is ESSER funded. So if ESSER funding ends, then, then we still have to figure out whether or not we're not, just by approving the job description doesn't mean that we're putting this into our recurring no. budget. No, we're putting the job description there, and at the end of the ESSER funding, when that runs out, we can either abolish the position okay. or we can decide to fund it with right. recurring funds so or grants if we can find some grant money. Right. So my question um, is on the learning coach, it says reports to director of college and career education and workforce development coordinator. And then over here, the liaison is supervises none, reports to the director of college and career education. Is that workforce development coordinator the part-time person? Who is that? It's, that's what I thought. I, yeah. I, I was kind of seeing this. I, I thought that's probably what the case was because... Right, that we split, right? Okay. 
That's what I thought. So I want to point right. that out. That's correct. So I would like to, um, I would like to amend my motion. So do we need to end that, or can I amend it right now? Okay. So I'm going to amend my motion to approve the new job descriptions with the uh, edits made to the re the reporting structure and the uh, titling of the workforce development coordinator being adjusted, but with that, my motion Did to I approve. Have a second? Okay, now run it by me again, Andrew. You want both of these positions to answer to different ones? Or? This was a mistake on here. Workforce development coordinator is what what the old title was, and now it's 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 actually work based learning liaison. Okay, I'll go along with that. Okay. I'll keep the second to the motion that you amended. There we go. Is there Thank any you. more discussion on these two jobs? Yes, I'd like to address this with both feet. We're probably three years behind of doing this. We've had two people in that position, never got off the ground. And if we're going to keep the big picture and the thing there, and I know Mr. Cummins heard my sermon before. I've set in on his meetings of people, but this, to get this going, we, we need this person. And we also need the factories and the companies that want us to train these people to please open the doors and let us in and tell us what they want. If they're gonna come here and the county wants to set these people, uh, we, they tell about our education program here and how good we are, but once they land here, you know, does our tools that we're training is on this. And I was, I was in some state meetings not too long ago. We built some real good technical schools across the state of Kentucky. And they got World War II machines in there that somebody donated. The machines that we gotta have today is all gotta be computer driven and know what those factories are wanting because that in the market is changing. We see what the chips can happen or whatever you call it on the smart boards and all of this stuff and that's coming home to us real fast. But we gotta train in a different way than what we do and we gotta have this person that we talked about here to go out there and find out what we gotta have that we can introduce this to students. Hey, this is what you all can do for your life or whatever, and you can be trained for it. So these are really important business. We just should have had this thing going two or three years ago. The beauty of it is what we were funding with general fund was about a half a position along with the chamber. Now through ESSER funding, we will have one person fully for the liaison position and one full person split between the high school. So we had a half a person, now we have two to do that work. Any more discussion? You agree with me, <laughs> Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the second uh, thing that we pulled was consider approval of uh, contact tracking with Huron Consulting Group LLC DBA Strutter Education for cons con con Consulting <laughs> Services. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, I can give you some background on this one. Again, given the ESSER funding, this is something that would be wonderful to have. Many districts do have something similar or this particular organization uh, without ESSER funding because they see the importance of it. Warren County, Hardin County, Hopkins County, there are several counties that have been using this Studer group. They do several things, and the things that we on their menu would like to see happen here is they're helping us develop the next st strategic leadership plan, which we will begin working on this year. They can help guide us through that. But in addition to that, as you look at the strategic leadership plan back there, there are three pillars, personalized learning, talent development, and culture of excellence. We have great people implementing that plan. 
it's really hard for them to not only implement the plan, but then also evaluate the plan, collect data on the plan, give reports on the plan. It's just a lot of work. Also, the ESSER money, if you've been noticing, several districts are hiring a whole person, one whole position, just to keep up with what we have to keep up with with ESSER funding, because all of this has to be evaluated with regular routine reports. So that what the Studer Group actually does is they will help us lead that plan, develop the plan. They will help us assess it. They will help develop all of our um, forms that we send home, all of our questionnaires. Whenever we need stakeholder input, they will develop those. They will take care of sending them out. They will analyze the data. They will bring it back to us and then not only just hand it to us, but help develop a plan. And I'll tell you how I got interested in this was I've been a fan of the Baldrige criteria, the Baldrige Award, and the Baldrige way of looking at continuous improvement, always looking to, to get better. And when I started researching that, I realized they do a lot of those things, and then they hand you the information, but Studer takes it the next step and helps you to create the plan, implement the plan, and coach you through the plan. The other thing that made me interested in, in looking at continuous improvement was years ago I served on our hospital board in Henderson, and I looked at the way hospitals take data constantly to improve on a variety of different things. And I feel like where we are in Shelby County, we have so many great things going, but we've got to constantly keep looking at how to improve. And that's very difficult to do with the staff we have and without increasing our recurring budget and adding staff. This grant money, the ESSER money, would allow us to, for three years, up to three years, uh, have a contract with them to help us do that. Now the other thing about having a three-year contract is we, I had Mr. Owsley look this over and he made sure we do have a 30-day out clause. So at any time, if we're not happy, or if they're not happy and don't think we're doing the right work, uh, we can cancel the contract. So it is a three-year contract, but there is um, a clause to, to get out of the contract if we so desire. But I've, I've heard great things about the company and all of the uh, superintendents that have used this particular company have been very pleased with the reports they get and the improvements they see uh, in efficiency, effectiveness, and also cost savings from working with Studer. Any questions? It's, so I'm, I'm just gonna share that I am familiar with and I've done work with both the Huron group and the Studer group. I've, I've read a few of the Studer books, but mm -hmm. Huron, I mean, Huron and Studer are both huge in healthcare. Um, in fact, if you just Google it, it comes up healthcare. Uh, they do have education services, and I get it. When I first read this, I was like, "Why? Are, what are we doing hiring healthcare consultants?" But I, I get it. It makes sense. Um, so I made the motion. Um, I made the motion. And I, I'll, I'm going to continue with the motion but I'm gonna abstain from the vote for, for business reasons. Okay. Not, not for any reason of not liking what I've made a motion for, but I'm gonna abstain from the vote. Okay, okay. okay any more discussion, any more yeah, questions? Yeah, I, I just think anytime you've got another set of eyes, outside eyes, that's looking in on your operation, and in other words, uh, a lot of times uh, we just back off from the woods or something, but our people are all doing what they're supposed to be doing. But in other words, this is always someone looking over your shoulder that maybe see it a little bit different, a little bit better way to do it. But in other words, mm -hmm. have that on. The other part of it is, is if we're not going to use it, listen to them or whatever, we don't need to be getting for it. So that's your part to make sure that we're listening to what you're telling us. And the other part of it is, if we don't like it, we can get out of the contract. Okay, are we ready for a vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Other. 
4A, a knowledge review of the district technology plan for 2021-2022. Any discussion? Okay, a, uh, 4B, a knowledge review of the security plan for the annual data security comp comp compliance. Who did the review? Who did, okay. What, what was your question? Who did the review? Oh, okay. Who did the review? Okay. Okay. Do I hear uh, 4C, closed session for the purpose of discussing proposed or pending litigation per KRS 61.810-1C in the matter styled as followed CBE resolution and assessment. So moved. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, closed session.